Hello and welcome to Sports Africa, the show that brings you the biggest names, the biggest games and loads more on the African continent. I'm Janine Anthony and here's what's coming up in this week's program. The Great Ethiopian Run is aptly named. Get ready for a carnival with a political twist. Imagine what happened 20 years back, these two countries. We had the no big big fight. After all, these two countries are becoming together. One of Africa's most successful football national teams go down memory lane, recalling a comeback for the ages. I was super excited for my goal, for my family, for myself, for my team, for my country, so I was super excited. As Africa's Beach Soccer Cup of Nations kicks off, get to know defending champion Senegal. Ever wondered what makes a Zimbabwean? Star athlete Tatenda Sumba spills the beans. Kind people and very educated. And the bravest fans compete for Africa's most anticipated throne, who will be crowned king in this week's Armchair Experts. Thank you for joining us on BBC Sports Africa here from the beautiful Cape Coast Stadium, which recently hosted the Africa Women's Cup of Nations here in Ghana. We have women's football coming up in the show, but first we serve things off with a fun run. Now, one of the most successful athletics countries in long distance running is Ethiopia, and every November, thousands of participants flock into Addis Ababa for a run that has a real carnival feel. Those contesting the Great Ethiopian Run this year did so for many reasons. So, we caught up with some of them and brought the sights and sounds from one of Africa's biggest 10 kilometer run. <laughs> Great Ethiopia run is not only running. Later, Great Ethiopia run has become a little bit like a festival. Everyone who, who comes for a Great Ethiopia run, his or her first uh, uh, target, you know, how to enjoy you know, the, the race, how to enjoy you know, the atmosphere. No, we started with 10,000 participants in 2001, but it's been growing each year. So, you know, we have 44,000 participants last year, and we still have 44,000 this year. There is a lot of music, there is a lot of dancing. It's a running carnival, you could say. Sport is love. With this love, everyone can come together. So uh, we can uh, contact with the Eritreans, with the Kenyans, with the Ethiopians. So it connects everybody. We are friends with Arsenai for a long time in the races. We meet him in outside but not in Ethiopia, not in Eritrea. This is more than anything now, not only for Eritrea, for Ethiopia, even for Africa. Now we are, we are in the right way, in the right track. I've seen sports now, it's like a uniting factor. Now I learned that Ethiopia and Eritrea now, they are now one. Imagine what happened you know, 20 years back, these two countries. We had you know, a big, big fight. That fight left you know, many lives. Many of our brothers and sisters and both sides. After all, these two countries have become you know, together. It is Arini, but I'm Kabulu Nagarbalay. One of the, the, the most uh, happiest moments in my life is the reunion of Ethiopia and Eritrea. Sport has uh, a, a huge meaning to bring peace, to bring love. So I, I, I'm very happy to see uh, the world, world's most uh, well known. Uh, athletes that are here today.
and it's going well also with the current reforms that's been going on in Ethiopia. Uh, as you know, Prime Minister Abiy is, is reforming um, the country. Half of the cabinet are women. We have our first woman president. The message has a, a great meaning uh, for women in Africa and especially for women in Ethiopia uh, because our role as a woman is very minimal. The key in the family is the woman, the mother. If the woman are responsible for the house, why not? Not, on, not only why not, of course, the women, they have to be responsible for their a country. I'm a lady, I'm a strong girl, and I can do everything. Being a woman is uh, something that's not being behind a man. We have to push ourselves and continue being the first. And we have to be leaders, like our president. All these people are running, supporting girls, because supporting women is supporting family. And that's very important. We have always underestimated our culture, our strengths as women, and this is time for us to explore the strengths that we have, whether in the house, in institutions, or out, out in the world. Ali organized this race and by organizing this race he gives a lot of opportunity to athletes like us and personally Haile is a great athlete and we look up to him. You know we're creating a platform and you know the top 10 athletes if they don't have managers they would get managers so it's a good platform for upcoming athletes. Great stuff. So can these experts we have up next keep up just fine with another high-octane sport? Let's cross you over to our referee Celestine Karune in Nairobi who will lead us through our sports quiz amateur expert. So strap yourselves ladies and gentlemen because it's a rugby special. Eloya, we are here. Eloya. Eloya, we are winning. Eloya. Ah, eh, 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 eh. What an interesting pair of fans. That was quite an introduction. This week, the armchair expert is all about the oval ball rugby. And let's get to know our contestants. Pogindonga here, Kenya rugby number one fan, unbeaten champion, here to beat a good friend, Martin Karyuki. Martin Karyuki here, number one heckler in Kenya, and I'm here to beat Pogi and teach him a few things. Well, the contestants say they're both here to win, so let's find out. It's the first round. Here are the rules. Round one. It's simple. 30 seconds each to answer as many questions as possible on what's going on in the sporting week. Pogi, you're player number one, and your time starts now. Mm -hmm. Which New Zealand team won the 2018 Super Rugby title? Hurricanes. Wrong Crusaders. Which club won the 2017-2018 Kenya Cup? KCB. Correct. The loose head and tight head are often the heaviest players in the team. What position do they play? Props. Correct. Which team won the 2018 Rugby Championship? Uh, oh, the All Blacks. <laughs> I'll give it to you. It's New Zealand. Which team did Kenya Sevens beat to win the Singapore Sevens? Fiji. Correct. Who invented rugby? Web Ellis. Correct! And just at the end, you got five questions correct. Martin, <laughs> do you think you can do better? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, your time starts now. How many teams competed in the 2018 Super Rugby seasons? 14, 15 or 16? 16. Wrong, 15. Which year was Nairobi Rugby Club Impala founded? 1946 or 1956? 56. Correct. What is the name of the player who normally wears the number nine jersey? Scrummer. Correct. Which team won the 2018 Six Nations? Uh, Ireland. Correct. Which year did the Kenya Sevens win their first ever IRB Sevens Series leg title? 2016. Correct. Who was the first black South African to captain the Springboks? Uh, the current ones. <laughs> so you're wrong or something. <laughs> Unfortunately, you got that wrong, and that means you got four questions right. Let's look at the scores. 
Well, Martin, you're on a four point. Pogi, you're on a five point. I'm liking this contest. Don't go anywhere. There's still a lot more to play for. Wow, those are what you call hecklers. I can't wait for round two. Now, back in 2015, Nigeria's Super Falcons went to the Women's World Cup in Canada, where they faced Titans Sweden. Now, I watched this game and it was one of the epic games of the tournament. We caught up with a few of these players who ended up revealing and relieving one of their greatest sporting moments. You know, going into the World Cup as African champions, expectations were high. It was a very tough group having had to play USA, Australia, and uh, of course, Sweden. We could feel the pressure immediately we walked into the stadium. But when I walked in, I actually knew it was my day. So I didn't feel much pressure, because I was so happy being in the World Cup for the first time. Ahead and he the back of the net, go Sweden! From the looks of it, the Nigerians are rattled. It's an own goal. I scored an own goal. And, uh, and it was actually my first goal at the World Cup, so <laughs> it was terrible. It wasn't a good feeling. After two nil down, it wasn't fun anymore. After the first half, we went to the dressing room and our coach was like, you guys can't let this, you're playing better than Sweden. I know, I believe in you, I trust in you guys, you can do it. And just not for you, but for the country and for your family back home. Someone needed to, you know, take up responsibilities and uh, bring the team up to speed, and that that was when Ngozi Okobi came in. It was actually a great ball from Desire Paranozi because she had a good move from this flank and then a very good crosses into the 18 where I was actually on that spot, and I tried to steal the ball away from the defender and then picked a very right good spot for myself, and that was the first goal. I was actually overwhelmed when I got the first goal. My sister Tushuela has a good speed to pick up any ball, so I had to kick a long one and she actually used her strength and her speed to her tweet Fisher. And then it was a lucky one from us and then that was the goal. The crowd goes wild for our sister, right in front of them. I was so happy because it's an assist from me. As a player, an assist is a plus to a midfielder. 2-2, Two -two. then I knew that we still have a chance. But immediately when she scored the second goal, I said, yes, this is it. She passes to Sam the team. Three, two, Sam scores. I tried to pick it up from there, encourage my team. And it was really great because I didn't expect what I did. Desire had the ball and she dribbled their, I think it was their two, their upside right. And she played to Kobe. And I was making the runs inside the net. And Kobe saw me. So immediately I make the runs. She couldn't hesitate to do anything. She just passed the ball to me. And I ran through the ball, and guess what? Was in Meg. I make the goalkeeper to score the third goal. So. The game is 3-3. Three, three. Nigeria's Super Falcons have completed a historic comeback. What a goal! I was super excited for my goal, for my family, for myself, for my team, for my country. So I was super excited. Nigeria's Super Falcons have defied all logic. And it's a historic comeback! And that was a sporting moment. Legendary heroines, they sure are. That's it for part one. When we come back from the break, we'll be hearing from some of the best beach soccer players on the continent and their quest for more glory. This is Sport Africa from the BBC.
Welcome back to BBC Sports Africa. On Saturday, the Africa Beach Soccer Cup of Nations kicks off and of the eight championships ever played, Senegal have won half of them. And this month, they'll be looking to defend their title in Egypt. So we've been to meet some of these kings who've built their castles on sand. In beach soccer, we don't wear boots or studs. We wear ankle braces to protect our ankles because it can be difficult to play on sand. In the last edition of the Cup of Nations, 2016 in Nigeria, we were the African champions, but the tournament was very, very difficult because beating Nigeria in the house is no small feat. But as you know, us Senegalese, we have a strong mentality. It was extraordinary to win the African Championships and then participate in the World Cup. Getting eliminated there was difficult. We advanced from the pool rounds and Italy knocked us out. It was disappointing. Eleven side football players with ten players and the goalkeeper. There is a difference because in beach soccer you play with your feet, without cleats or studs. We are also playing on sand. In beach soccer, you do acrobatic tricks that we rarely see in traditional football. It's more technical than 11 aside. We do bicycle kicks, other acrobatic tricks. We hope that in the future we'll see this sport in the Olympic Games at the world level. The Senegalese will do everything to represent Africa and make it a better sport for the kids that will play tomorrow. with Martin and Podgy slugging it out to become our armchair expert for this week. Round two beckons with our referee Celestine in Nairobi. Well, at the end of round one, Podgy, you are on five points. Martin, you are on four points. It's time for round two. Let's look at the rules. Round two, convince me. You each have 15 seconds to argue for or against. Two points are up for grabs. Gentlemen, this week's convince me statement is... In 10 years' time, which version of rugby will be the most popular? 15 aside or 7s aside? Poggy, you will be arguing for 7s aside. And Martin, you will be arguing for 15 aside. Poggy, your 15 seconds start now. Definitely 7s will be the more popular spot. Uh, it's cheaper, it's easier to excel in. As you've seen in the last couple of years, uh, the more African countries are picking up 7s. And as Kenya is a testament, 15s rugby is real hard, so we don't like hard things. Well, you, That's it. you have it's finished. Short and sharp. You, you have finished it just before your time <laughs> ended. Martin, yeah. you've heard what he had to say. Yes. So it's time for you to convince me. Your time starts now. 15 is a franchise sport. It's like a Mercedes Benz. It's very simple. It's about, not about cheapness, it's about playing for your pride and for your country. Every player wants to play a 15th World Cup. That's all. You know the hack. The All Blacks do it before every game. South Africa do it very well. So, 15. Okay, I, 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 I like the argument and I am a bit torn here. <laughs> and the two points will go to Martin. Get in there! <laughs> <laughs> but not to worry, Poggy. Let's look at how the, the scores stand after the second round. <laughs> Poggy, you're on a five points. Martin, you're on a six points. You're edging to the lead. But there's still one final round to play for later in the show. Well in Perji, but will he sustain it? We'll have to find out. Tatenda Sumba is one of Zimbabwe's top athletic stars and his abilities has earned him plaudits from his home country. Having set many national records, this 27-year-old now sets his sights on an Olympic medal. But first, he says he's got to learn to tie his left shoelaces the right way. 
Putting my left spike first before my right one and tying my left one before my right one. Every time I do it, it kind of just worked for me. A couple of years ago, they were not considered cool, but everybody's doing it now, so I feel like I've started the trend. I have goals every year that I set, so achieving those goals makes me motivated. I enjoy the recovery workouts. It's short, it's quick. Biggest achievement was representing my country at the 2016 Olympics. Winning a medal at the 2020 Olympics will top that. I like indie rock, which is weird. I would say Coldplay. Uh, the workouts are tough and just recovery, you have to recover fast. You can't underestimate anyone. Winning feels good all the time. I have this idea of taking other people's ideas from other countries and bringing them into one place, especially to Africa, to develop African countries. I've made some big choices sometimes, but it's in the past now. Sadza. It's basically like uh, what you call swallow in Nigeria. So it's maize meal uh, with stew. It can be chicken or beef stew. We are kind people and very educated. I think follow your dreams uh, because it can get you to places that other people cannot see. So if you have a vision, make sure you stick to it and just follow it. We wish Tatenda Sumba all the best in his Olympic quest. It's here, the knockout round, and last we checked, Martin and Poggi were up for it. And now it's the final and third round of Amateur Experts. So, who will be crowned king? Over to you, Celestine. It is a one-point contest. Poggi, you're on five points. Martin, you're on six points. It's time for the deciding round. Let's look at the rules. Round three, the quickfire decider. 45 seconds to push up your score. Remember, shout your name before you answer or you lose out. Gentlemen, you have 45 seconds, which starts now. Which Kenyan sportsman is referred to as a YouTube athlete? Poggy. Julius Yego. Correct. Generally, in what rugby position does the line-out thrower play? Martin. <coughs> Lock. Yuka. Correct. Oh. In what country does a football club TP Mazembe play? Poggy. Congo. Zaire. Correct. I'll give you because you said Zaire, it's DR Congo. Yes. <laughs> Who won the 2018 Formula One World Championships? Poggy. Correct. Lewis Sorry. Hamilton. Yes, Lewis Hamilton. I said correct before that. <laughs> In the game of tennis, which of the following is not a type of playing surface? Soft court, hard court, grass or clay? Martin. Hard court. Soft court. Correct. <laughs> Who is the captain of Harambe Stars? Poggy. Um, Victor Nyama. Correct. <laughs> Time is up. <laughs> you already, uh, you already conceded. Thank uh, you. Uh, are you unshake, conceding? Unshake. <laughs> well, okay. unbeaten in this, <laughs> in this round, Poggy, you had five points correct, and Martin, you only got one point correct. Let's see what that has done to the scoreboard. <laughs> Martin, you're on seven points at the end of that contest. Poggy, you're on ten points, which means you're this week's amateur expert. You can come and sit on the throne. Hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> I, li I like the winner's, the winner's walking style. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, I'm used to it. The unbeaten record continues. Yeah. Does it feel good? Yeah, it feels great, but it was expected. It was, <laughs> I mean, it was only Martin. Well, he expected it to win, and we are always having fun here on Armchair Expert. Until next time, goodbye. What a finish. Congratulations, Poggi. You're a worthy, worthy champ. Do you want to compete to be a BBC armchair expert? If you think you've got the knowledge and speed to be on our new sports quiz, record a 15-second video on your phone telling us why and send your video to plus four four seven nine zero eight five four three seven six nine. That's plus four four seven nine zero eight five four three seven six nine. Armchair Expert on B.
BBC Sport Africa. Remember, you can get in touch with us on anything you've seen in this week's programme via Facebook or Twitter, or you can head over to our BBC Sport Africa website where you can catch some of these pieces again. As Ghanaians will say, Modasi. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's do this again next week, shall we? I'm Jenny Anthony, and I'm signing out from Ghana. Goodbye, guys.